Man, I just cannot win games from top lane anymore. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but if I don't get a lead, we just lose at 10 minutes. If this sounds like you and you want some tips that will help you win top on a regular basis, then you have come to the right video. Welcome Game Leapers, I'm Coach Eags, multi-season challenger player now coach, and you are about to learn the key mistakes even a top player like TF Blade makes and how to not make them. We'll be watching a game of TF Blade playing Camille against Adrian's Riven and finding out why the lane was essentially over at level 3 and why the game was over by 10 minutes. The tips in this video are invaluable, not just to top laners but anyone looking to improve, so stick around, leave a like to help us out and engage the ears, here we go. Oh, and make sure you check out our elite website, GameLeap.com, your favorite challenger players and coaches offering courses, guides, and videos to help you get better. Join thousands of others and sign up yourself. Links will be in the description and comments down below. All right, let's get into it. Tip number one, two equals go. When you have a health advantage in lane and hit level two before your opponent, use it. Look to skill that second ability straight away and dish out some damage. This damage can turn into a kill or just a lane win in the early game. The best way to achieve this is to stand up in the lane just as you're about to hit level 2. In other words, the minion you're about to last hit for your second ability, stand ahead of it, closer to the enemy top laner's side of the lane. What does this do? This creates an opportunity to gap close as soon as you hit this spike. Look at TF Blade. Why is he standing so far away from Riven when he has arguably the biggest advantage in the game? There's no good reason for it. I could even ask, why hit level 2 in the first place? TF Blade might as well be level 1 still. What's even more tilting, sounds like I'm roasting him here, I guess I kind of am, is after he hits level 2, he clicks away from the 200 HP level 1 ribbon. What's there to be afraid of here? He can skill his hookshot and immediately E off the north wall, and if it hits, Riven dies guaranteed. Even if he can't get onto Riven, Riven has to back off the entire wave and miss out on certainly gold and probably XP, which is huge in any lane. So knowing this, where should TF Blade be positioning as he's about to last hit this minion? To the right of it, good. So next time you're playing top lane and have access to two abilities prior to your opponent, do not play like they are the one with the upper hand. You have the power spike so play past that midway point and look to use it. Tip number two, shove the cannon. In your games do not ever slow push the first cannon wave like TF Blade does here. Auto attack the first melee minion as soon as it comes to lane and spam your auto attacks and abilities to get your wave into the enemy turret. This may be a blur at the moment, but let's understand why. If CF played slow pushes, and I'll pause it, what do you think are the disadvantages? The first one, when you don't have flash, you are vulnerable to ganks, obviously. When you have the bigger minion wave and sit inside of it, yes you can potentially 1v2, but it's a lot safer to hard push the next wave and then recall, because you're in lane for a shorter amount of time. The second, you get nothing out of it. There's no advantage to slow pushing an extra wave unless your jungler is at a gank, which isn't the case in this game, and you already have enough gold for another item. In this case, it would be another Doran's Blade, which is a great item for the early lane. This is also known as a Cheetah Recall, and I'm sure you guys have heard of this, and one of the awesome things about Cheetah Recalling is that around the 3 minute mark, the enemy jungler will probably gank one of your lanes, and a fight will break out. What do you have to help? Teleport. Nice. So not only is it efficient for your lane to shove the cannon wave, but opens up opportunities on the rest of the map. The third and final reason, it creates a bounce on the fourth wave. See this wave coming to lane now? Riven's wave is in the same position, just mirrored, so it's around here. Because TF Blade didn't shove, the fourth wave is going to collide closer to Riven's tower. And what does this leave TF Blade open to? The enemy jungler, perfect. If I rewind at 10 or so seconds, if this friendly cannon wave is shoving, that fourth wave will bounce back to a neutral position and TF Blade would be a lot safer in lane. Unfortunately, the enemy Rek'Sai ganks him and this leads me into my next tip. The map is a friend. Number 3. When you are playing top lane, yes you want it to be a 1v1, but it isn't. Anyone is more than welcome to come to your lane and spoil the party, as I'm sure you've all experienced. So you have to start making decisions in your games based on what the map is telling you. This is most apparent when you get ganked or are trying to escape a gank or certain situation. Let me pause it here. Now can someone in the comments please let me know what TF Blade was thinking here, I'm genuinely curious. But let's look at the map for a second. What is it telling us? What information can we gather from it? Our jungler is in Narnia, as in Zed is nowhere near us and cannot help, right? And the enemy Annie has mid priority, and she can cut us off if we were to run towards mid. Not to mention that a level 3 Echo isn't really a champion yet, so what on earth is he going to do to help? So where should TF Blade run knowing this information? 
What is his quickest route to safety? Well, it's got to be past blue buff and towards his second tier tower. If he was to run up towards his shrine brush, what can Rek'Sai do? She can flash over and knock him up. Keep in mind that Rek'Sai did use her tunnel top lane to gank him, so it's on cooldown for another 20 or so seconds, I'd say. Now, TF Blade computes the information our good friend the map is telling us and runs towards the Annie, dies, and then opens up all 26 letters on the keyboard and a bit of punctuation to top it all off. Same again happens in this situation. Annie has gone for a roam, and Zed, what a friendly summoner he is, tries to help TF Blade out and pings this information. What does TF Blade do? Doesn't respond to it, dies, and types in chat, I'm FF. What do we learn from this, guys? That the map is your friend and is one of the most valuable sources of information for anyone in the game. When you are getting so-called camped in your games and you don't have your teammates to back you up, this is what we call playing the weak side. You are outnumbered on this side of the map. What this also means is that you aren't outnumbered on the other side of the map and your teammates should be able to capitalize on that situation. This might lead to drakes or turrets or dives. So if TF Blade just retreats and reacts to the map and his teammates pings, he may lose some CS, but he wastes Annie's time and he would have actually been alive to help Zed and Co out in the ensuing fight. Even if we look at the scoreboard this game, TF Blade's team is doing fine. Zed has a gold lead, Echo is scaling, Samira is Samira, let's be honest, and Leona will be useful regardless. What about Annie picking up an assist when they kill TF Blade level 3? Maybe Echo at this point would have been even with Annie if she didn't get that XP. Maybe Rek'Sai would be even further behind Zed if TF Blade didn't give her a free assist level 3 as well. And this leads me on to tip number 4, the blame game. If you want to lose, blame everyone else. It's quick, it's easy. You know what else it is though? It's weak and arguably the biggest impediment to improving, and we are all here to improve, right? So do not ever blame your teammates at any stage in any game. No matter how tilting this game can be, your allies might misplay a situation or bait you into dying, but you know what though? I guarantee you could have done something differently to avoid that situation, whether your teammate entered or not. Let me ask you and TF played. His death here. Is this anyone else's fault but his own? Does he want Zed to W flash through mid lane? Does he want Echo to hack the system, you know, hit level 16 with 6 items and one shot Riven, Rek'Sai and Annie? Even if you play perfectly, my friend, there is no reason to type up a storm. It helps nobody out. Think about this game, and what we've been through already. Has TF Blade made mistakes? Yes. He's missed opportunities. What about if Zed was to question mark ping his AFK at level 2? Or his slow push on the cannon wave? That wouldn't help in any way, and neither does TF Blade opening up the chat to have a rant at his teammates. A few minutes later he's back at it, spam pinging Echo and question marking the map as if he couldn't have done anything else to win this game. I want to hand out another tip at this point and this is tip number 5. Ultimates are everything. We've already learned how level 2 is a big part of the game right? You know what else is? Level 6. Your ultimate is your strongest and most impactful ability, so if you are 1v1ing your opponent without your ultimate and they have theirs, likelihood is you're hitting the deck. You're walking into an unfair fight. If I pause it, what can you tell me about the enemy team in terms of their levels? There's one in particular that stands out on the scoreboard, right? Annie, and her level 6 is one of the deadliest in League. TF Blade, because of tilt or whatever, decides to headbutt Annie in this brush and then bring out the big gun again, this being his keyboard. It's similar to the map situation. The scoreboard offers information and informs you on what decision to make. Hey TF Blade, Annie is level 6, says the scoreboard. Hey TF Blade, Rek'Sai is nearby too says the map. Hey guys, I don't care, none of this is my fault, says TF Blade. Typically, as a solo laner, you will hit level 6 off the 6th wave, which is the second cannon wave. Riven hits level 6 off this minion, and this fight is very accessible for her. Keep in mind that TF Blade is only level 5. So Riven can queue over the wall and gap close pretty easily. So all in all, TF Blade shouldn't fight because of the enemy team's level 6s, and should probably ping and communicate with his team that this is a bad fight. Look at this fight later in the game, same thing. What does Camille not have? Her ultimate. And despite knowing that the enemy team is nearby, TF Blade decides to face check anyway, runs into the Yanni, and this fight costs the blue team the game. Ultimates are everything. In your games, only go in when it's at least an even playing field and you have your ultimate at the ready. And yeah, do not vent your frustrations in the chat. Can't stress that one enough. If you want to start hard carrying from the top lane, then apply these tips in your games, Game Leapers. I know for a fact they will help you out. Before exiting, if you want to stay ahead of the curve, make sure you have subscribed and turned on all notifications and GameLeap.com. Our website is the market leader in providing you with the best League of Legends content designed to help all of you reach your potential. 
hundreds of videos, courses, guides, you name it, just one click away. So join thousands of others and get signed up today. Links down below. This has been Coach Jigs. Until next time.